This meeting is being recorded. Yeah, Prakash, I think we can yes. start. Yeah, sure. Hi, welcome everyone to the uh, Data Center Telco Communication DTC transformation uh, as part of the uh, 2022 Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya National Mission on Training Teachers. So this is our number series two, and this is the uh, day two uh, on the 22nd. And uh, we are going to hear from our data center Make in India expert, Sanjay Loda. So give you the background, Sanjay Loda is the MD of NetWeb Technologies. He is in the business of service innovation for last 30 years. And as an innovator, he has covered broad areas, starting from servers, high performance computing, now moving towards network gear, and also thinking of mobile Make in India efforts. And with his Tyron brand of servers, plus additional, uh, which he makes uh, with his uh, facility at uh, Faridabad. So it has been a, a great uh, service which he has rendered to the country, starting from servers manufacturing to storage solution, implementing solutions for cloud, big data, AI, supercomputer, and coupled with belief in make in India uh, as the key. From made in India, he has moved to make in India. And he received acknowledgement through prestigious award from uh, for significant contribution from Dr. Ashwin Vaishnav, the Union Minister for Railway, IT and Communication, Government of India. And with that uh, so excellent background we have, we welcome Sanjay Loda to take the floor. Go ahead, sir, take the floor. It's yours too. Thank you. Thank you, Prakash ji. Actually, it has been really, we have been uh, innovating and have been trying to work on Make in India for a very long period. And basically we see the, we see now it's taking uh, shape in reality and the kind of government focus and the support from customers we are getting is really, really fabulous. And basically that is giving us a lot of strength so as to invest and so as to make it. So people used to say a few years back, it is not possible, but basically now we have shown that it is possible and been doing very well. We completely stack. Uh, we, I have with me my CTO, Mr. Hemant Agarwal, as well as my director, Sales and Marketing, Mr. Him, Mr. Hirde Vikram. So I will let Hirde to take forward this presentation for you. Thank you. Welcome, Hirde. One minute. I think Hirde will just start. One minute. Somehow, I think there's some problem with the system. He's trying to rectify it in a min, in a, I think 30 seconds, he should be fine. He's not getting voice, he told me, but I think- No, no problem, no problem. We'll hold for a few minutes, no problem. Are you able to hear us, Hirdeji? Yeah, Ritaji, are you able to hear us? Actually, Hirde is not able to hear us. Hirde is not able to hear us. Maybe he'll come here. One minute, hold on. Yes, uh, I can. Can you hear us now? Yeah, we can hear you. Go ahead, sir. 
Yeah. 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 I'm sorry. I I had lost the connection in between. Sorry for that. No, no, no. Don't worry about it. Just continue. Okay. 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 So, uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Hrade Vikram. So, uh, Sanjay ji has just introduced me that I'll be taking care of the. Uh, you know, uh, we'll be presenting the uh, solutions what we are producing in India. So, starting from uh, there itself, let me just show you the uh, details here. First of all, as uh, Prakash ji has introduced us, uh, NetWeb uh, is an Indian OEM who are manufacturing servers, workstations, supercomputing systems, storage systems, and uh, some related solutions for last uh, more than two decades now. And uh, today I'll be covering brief details about what kind of solutions we have been presenting, uh, we have been producing in India so far. So starting with the brief introduction of our organization, let me just share you some details here. About Tyron Systems, Tyron Systems is the brand name owned by NetWeb Technologies and uh, NetWeb Technologies as an organization is present in five countries uh, as of today. We are present in India, we are present in Singapore, uh, then Indonesia, apart from that Vietnam and Dubai, the Middle East area. And we are serving almost more than 7,000 customers worldwide. Uh, and we are India's only uh, HPC provider or supercomputing systems provider who have crossed a mark of more than even 500 HPC installations across India and across the globe, in fact. Not just limited to the supercomputing systems, providing supercomputing systems, we are also known for producing uh, specific GPU-based systems, specific uh, design-based GPU-based systems, which uh, uh, includes single GPU, multi-GPU, dual GPU, four GPU, or up to eight GPUs, uh, you know, in a single system or single, in, single enclosure. Apart from that, NetWeb is also known for uh, uh, designing private cloud solutions, and we have been helping many Fortune 500 companies, Government of India enterprises, by providing them complete private cloud infrastructure, maintaining those cloud solutions, and then providing them services for day-to-day -day, uh, management. Apart from that, some of the related solution uh, which are uh, configured and deployed by us on top of our hardware, it includes implementation of big data solutions. Apart from that, deployment of AI stack, AI-based solutions using our own hardware, using our own so, you know storage systems, which are uh, you know whenever needed, attached with our uh, server systems. So uh, apart from uh, just the hardware, we have been delivering solutions, as I mentioned earlier also, across all the prominent government organizations in India. And apart from that, we have been serving many Fortune 500 companies as well. So quickly going forward, I'll share you brief information about uh, how does the portfolio of NetWeb looks like. So as I mentioned earlier also, if we talk about the typical hardware part, then we have been producing servers, workstation, storage, and we source networking components for designing our solutions. So as you can see the product portfolio shown on the screen, these are the uh, main hardware components which we have been producing. Apart from that, if you look at the solutions, then as I mentioned earlier that we are known for uh, being India's uh, leading supercomputing solution providers. So definitely our HPC solutions are known uh, the world over. Apart from that, our cloud solutions, which includes building private cloud, hybrid-based uh, cloud solutions. And uh, in many cases, we are using OpenStack technology, or we are also using our own uh, stack, which we use to build cloud solutions for our customers. Apart from that, we have been designing, uh, you know, if you look at uh, uh, high-end storage solutions, like high-performance storage solutions, we have got those solutions also available. And if we talk about big data and AI-oriented solutions, then we have been producing we have been deploying those solutions also. And we have done that already by serving many government of India enterprises in the, in the country. Moving forward, quickly sharing you details about, uh, if we talk about Make in India servers, workstation and storage systems, which are available for general purpose and uh, general purpose data center environment, then what are all those options which are available with us? I'm going to show you here. As you can uh, see on the screen here, there are two models we have recently introduced, which are compliant with Make in India. 
and uh, these systems have been uh, shipped to more than 500 government organizations already across country as of today and we have shipped out more than 2000 odd units of these systems respectively i'll be sharing you brief details about what these models uh, are all about these systems these server systems as i mentioned are making india compliant systems these systems are uh, meant uh, for the purpose of meeting the general purpose or addressing the general purpose workload needs for example if you look at uh, system uh, server type 1 which is shown here dit 400 tr-212 rl this is a system which provides close to 28 cores had, has got a capacity to support 1.5 terabyte of memory storage can it can house uh, more than 100 tb internal storage likewise if you look at server model 2 which is shown here which is largely meant for the purpose of serving as storage server can also have up to 28 cores again 1.5 tb of memory and it can support even more than 500 terabyte of internal storage so these are some of uh, two of our very popular server systems which we are producing in india and have been uh, supplying to many government and enterprise organizations for a long now next system which i can show you here is the solutions the storage solutions which we are building using the same storage server which i shown earlier this system we have been uh, you know largely providing to many of the users who target to build internal high capacity storage but with a uh, compute requirement as well for those scenarios we have been supplying this particular model which we are producing in india and as you can see we are supplying the system with all the possible interconnect options like 100 gig interconnect uh, you know for uh, uh, higher uh, network throughput and likewise we have got other interconnect options available like fc 10 gig 50 gig or 100 gig ethernet as well and likewise we also populate or hill uh, you know populate 100 gig in infinity band option as well in the same storage server next product which i you know when i started discussing about the general purpose products which we are producing in india so one of the most popular works you know category for us in india is producing uh, work sessions in india so largely these days you know many of the users are using uh, you know most of the popular ai workloads like tensorflow kiras tiano pytorch for understanding the needs of our customers we have been producing our uh, uh, customize or you can say tailored solutions for the uh, work session purpose which come with preloaded ai stack compilers compiled ai stack which provides you an access to quickly deployable uh, tools like spark kiras thiano pytorch so what we do we are populating our systems or configuring our work session systems with our solution called Tyron Qubytes, which is loaded on systems, on work sessions. And when these uh, this particular stack is deployed on our systems, it helps users save a lot of time by running, by allowing them to run multiple applications simultaneously. At the same time, as you can see, what we are uh, showcasing here is when users load these applications, these codes using our Tyron Qubytes application, which is loaded on our work session, they save a lot of time. At the same time, they are able to achieve much higher performance compared to a standard bare metal usage environment. So that gives a lot of advantage to our customers. So this is one of the most popular category where we have been serving our many of our researchers or uh, uh, you know faculty members or other uh, students across India or across you know multiple academic and research organizations in the country. Moving forward. Another general purpose category of product is that we are producing unified storage solutions in India. Uh, unified storage solutions, what we are producing is basically which starts from single controller system, which can house uh, you know, close to 100 terabyte of storage, and it can go up to a system which can house up to two petabyte of storage uh, by using, uh, by augmenting the uh, system by adding uh, JBOTs or uh, secondary enclosure to the storage. Apart from the you know, storage part, we are providing our unified storage solutions with multiple interconnect options like 1 gig, 100 gig, then 50 gig, 40 gig, 16 gig FC. So all those options are provided by us along with our unified storage systems. 
and uh, not just single controller we are also providing dual controller with inbuilt compression acceleration and uh, redundancy options which are inbuilt in our storage solutions quickly moving forward to the next category which is again very popular in our case is that we are providing our systems our uh, uh, workstation or servers with ai you know fine tuned for ai workloads and there also we use our uh, you know proprietary uh, tools which we are uh, loading on our servers we are supplying with our servers and workstations that help users a lot Sorry, it is taking a bit of time. Kindly bear with me to share the screen with you. Just a second. No problem. Yeah. So the stack, you know, the way we are providing our AI oriented systems, as I mentioned earlier, that we are loading our applications on top of our hardware, which is helping users to load these pre-compiled stack like Keras, Mixnat. And uh, you know TensorFlow, Cafe, PyTorch. I mean, there are hundreds of applications of pre-compiled codes which we provide as part of our Taron Cubite solution, which is available on Taron Cloud. How does it work actually? I'm going to show you here, which is you know largely taking care of AI-oriented workloads. If you can see that on the uh, user front, this engine is loaded on our systems, which has got host operating system. And then it has got our container runtime engine and on top of it, certain applications or the complete infrastructure, which is available at the user side. On left hand side, you can see the Taron cloud, which has got an access, which is providing users an access to hundreds of applications codes, which are pre-compiled and available in our Taron, Taron Cubites or Taron cloud. Now, as I mentioned earlier also that how we are helping our users is that from cloud to your system, these application codes can be loaded in a few seconds or you can say in, in a few minutes actually uh, and that saves a lot of time on one hand on the other hand it is basically using uh, you know letting users to increase the efficiency of their ai oriented systems how does it work for example if you're using a laptop you have got a connectivity available to uh, any virtual desktop environment i'm just citing an example here and from virtual desktop environment, we are getting the system connected to Tarum Cloud Manager, which is available in our cloud stack. Second scenario is that your laptop, which is connected to our Tarum Cloud Manager, is getting connected to uh, the virtual environment available in your system, available in your labs. From virtual environments, for virtual environment, we can have multi or mixed workload scenario available for example if you have got a big data access put data take out data from your big data stack and it can take the data to virtual stack virtual environment likewise it can help you to take out data or take out the files from your virtual environment to your hpc ai containers using uh, uh, cluster manager, Tyron cluster manager. Likewise, if you are using any GPU system, bare metal system, it can take out easily data from your host operating system and it can take to the virtual environment. So that's how this complete infrastructure, which is available at your end, can be utilized in multiple ways and it allows you to do the mixed workload. Uh, you know, it allows you to run mixed workloads using Tyron cluster manager suite, which is again available as part of our on AI solutions. Now, some of the uh, you know, main advantages which we get in case of the AI-oriented solution we provide. Number one is that the workstations we are providing, these all workstations are compatible workstations and these uh, systems work uh, you know, in sync with our uh, Qubits application. Qubits application provides you GPU and CPU optimized containers, which means that even if you are not using GPUs and you only want to run your uh, CPU related codes, still you have got an access to pre-compiled CPU codes available in the uh, Qubits cloud. 
then you as i mentioned earlier you get an access to over 100 plus containers available on tarum cubebytes cloud which allows you uh, not just to load applications to you know take out applications on on a faster pace but it also increases the efficiency of a uh, of your tarum system compared to any bare metal system used anywhere the next is that you can run different applications simultaneously we discuss about that also earlier so you can simply build a sim uh, quick access then as regards high scalability is concerned the same tarum cluster manager enabled with tarum cubebytes uh, allows you to scale your clusters or your gpu systems what uh, count of systems from one to you know multi hundred systems that kind of scalability is available by default and users and administrators can really enjoy it then apart from that i mean it is not just that we are providing an application you can also have a complete support mechanism available at the back end and you can talk to our experts and you know uh, take all guidance whenever needed and just to give you a glance about what you know the popular pre installed uh you know libraries or pre compiled codes which are provided by us with our ai suit then some of them are shown here like uh, you know cafe kira and subflow thiano all the we discussed earlier also but yes i mean i'm just showing you the uh, giving you a quick glance about uh, the popular machine learning libraries also which we provide as part of our solution now uh, another important aspect that although we have been serving general purpose data center usage environment or general purpose workloads the the important aspect of the upcoming technology upcoming usage in you know scenarios is to making your infra uh, compatible from private cloud solution standpoint or building your solution which can uh, make your setup make your infrastructure talk to a public cloud or building a hybrid cloud at uh, your organization premises and this is something which is coming up very fast and it is you know i would say the need of the art now so what all solutions we are providing as regards building private cloud solutions using uh, make in india compliant hardware which we are producing in india we have got complete solutions available in that sense complete solution i mean to say for example if you are trying to build an open stack based hybrid production uh, grade private cloud then you can use our servers and we can help uh, build the complete private cloud solution for your organization which will be covering the compute part storage networking obviously those who are well versed with open stack they understand the complete services mechanism which is associated with open stack we deploy the complete solution in that case and we help users you know use those services on daily basis so they can be different mechanism to deploy it we can deploy and it can be maintained by customer or we can deploy and even we, we can manage and maintain for you know customer organizations on their behalf so we provide even services also from that standpoint so here some of the popular you know services which we are providing uh, along with our open stack based private cloud solutions are shown here and we are providing complete end to end services for that purpose quickly moving on to the next part that uh, even if you are planning to build or you know establish a k8 based cluster or container platform then we have got complete k8 cluster establishment services then container uh, tarum container platform based services available using which users can easily build their clusters for building a private cloud setup at their organization for this this is something which is even i would say hardware agnostic for us we are providing services for that purpose but for most of our solutions we are providing hardware along with our own services for that purpose and uh, since uh, i would not like to uh, cross my timeline but i'll be sharing you quickly more details about uh, make in india compliant high performance storage solutions also which are available with us and these are the storage solutions which are uh, you know highly acclaimed by many uh, you know academic and research organizations in the country already some of the solutions i'm going to share you the uh, you know some inf brief information about that the solutions currently we are building for uh, specific tailored high performance environment are even able to deliver more than 100 gigabyte per second with more than even 7 million iops this is something which are the main highlights of the solution that's the reason we are explaining that here and to give you a more 
uh, information, brief information about how does it uh, work and what kind of architecture we follow and what kind of performance we deliver, I would like to share you some data shown uh, on the screen here. For example, if you are trying to build a setup, uh, you know, to build high performance storage for your multi GPU environment, let's say if we are considering an environment where you have got multi a hundred uh, DGX a hundred systems available. On the other hand, you also have got some a hundred GPU based servers available. For that purpose, we can build a high performance storage solution using our uh, Make in India compliance uh, systems, wherein we are able to deliver, as I mentioned earlier, also a performance stack performance of more than hundred gigabyte per second. And uh, if you can see the FIO operation details shown here we are easily able to achieve more than 3.5 million IOPS as mentioned here. And we have already crossed 7 million IOPS benchmark in some of our recent deployments, which are already underway. So this solution, we can cover more details about whenever we are given a chance, but I just wanted to give you a glimpse about that. We are producing some of the world's highest performing storage solutions, which can be connected uh, to your environment based on multi GPU servers or even if it is not related to multi GPU servers or multi GPU environment, still, if you are looking for a very high end uh, storage, which can serve your purpose, even in case of a private cloud setup, which you want to build serving, let's say hundreds or uh, thousands of clients uh, across India, for example, then you can uh, let us know, we can design a specific uh, high performance grid storage solution, which is again, I, I missed to mention this earlier, it's a cloud native solution what we are providing and it helps you to basically scale uh, by adding more and more nodes, more and more compute power to your private cloud environment. So it is a private, uh, it's a cloud native storage on one hand and the, on the other hand, it is a high performance tailored solution which can serve your multi GPU environment or even uh, uh, any other general uh, usage environment. So that was all from uh, our side. So we have got many other things also to cover, but since uh, I understand the limitation of time, I think I was given 30 minutes of time to cover all the details. So I'll just uh, uh, let uh, Sanjay sir to speak about it now. Yeah. Hello, thank you. Thanks for your time. And basically I think uh, in brief we wanted, we, uh, we wanted to cover basically what exactly we do with uh, all the Make in India things. So if you see all the top, all the major uh, solutions, high technology solutions like supercomputing, storage, cloud. So all these basically areas, we are really, we have enabled ourselves with Make in India hardware as well as basically the software is also completely, we are using open source and it is completely developed locally in India. So there is a lot of value addition which is going on. And basically, so we can, we are ready to compete with all the MNCs and these uh, uh, on all aspects. And we are there to help and support the government and all the organizations you guys work for. So we are open for any questions, whatever you have. Thank you, Sanjay and Hrithik. Uh, uh, if I get the name correctly. Uh, I'm Vikram. Hriday Vikram, okay. Yeah. So uh, it was a pleasure uh, hearing uh, you uh, go through the technical aspects and Sanjay handling the business aspects. We are very encouraged by your presentation. So let me go back to certain questions. I, I, I think Gokhale, are you there? I will ask you also to ask questions, but let me start with first question here. You have the hardware infrastructure and you have the software. Uh, the hardware make in India is one aspect, like good old days people, if you give the hardware, they will not take it unless they will give some free software. <laughs> now the issue is here. You have a setup of software, which is uh, humongous. I think uh, it's one of the best I have seen from an Indian manufacturer. Given that you have to have licenses on both sides, hardware and software with combination of open source. Some are open, some are proprietary. Example, if I talk about uh, uh, QDNN or something of uh, NVIDIA example, uh, you might be having some relationship with the vendor or the manufacturer, uh, the producer of the chips. How do you handle the licensing aspects on both sides when you are giving open source to the institutes or to the research institutes, especially high performance computing? Now, basically what happens is that we have great relationship with almost all, all the major OEMs like NVIDIA, Intel, AMD, all the major chip manufacturers. 
and basically since there is a pressure on them also to support make in india so basically they are also very eager to support make in india actually with the recent government announcement uh, there is a lot of government support which is coming uh, primarily which is basically suggesting the buyers to buy make in india so they also understand the importance of it so they work very closely with us and uh, we don't find any challenges maybe hemant can reply in case basically he can say something on this <clears throat> basically most of the vendors are like the question was about how do we offer open source solutions so most of these vendors are already uh, working on a lot of things with open source licensing model so because open source is the flavor which most customers want especially when it comes to high performance computing scientific community the research people they prefer open source so the vendors also um, enable uh, similarly okay so what you are saying is there is a support from the vendors to promote their products and hence uh, their arrangement with you is based on whatever they supply you for which the cost is there and that is accounting there is no royalty beyond that yeah, is that right? right yeah that's that's the key because uh, our understanding uh, is to make sure that uh, we are uh, getting the value and at the same time uh, we are uh, whatever uh, the usage is uh, justified Uh, without having to pay royalty now coming to the port building which you have done like the you got several solutions i see uh, even including ai ml and uh, storage and so what is the most uh, uh, in demand from you is it the storage solution is it the compute or is it the high performance compute or is it the ai ml what is the most sort after uh, products from your end actually and why why do you think so hpc has been really predominant hpc has been basically because uh, government focus on hpc came very early and basically government was they they launched the national supercomputing mission which was also based on make in india so hpc is one area where there is lot of demand and we had very good presence actually there and uh, we as i told you basically the total number of installations is even more then what everybody put together if you put it then it should be more than that so there one is super computing but the second area where we are finding lot of traction is the cloud actually now we are seeing lot of traction on the private cloud side and a uh, lot of organizations may it be private maybe may it be government so they are all working with us and they are trying to basically set up the private cloud ai ml is growing definitely multiplying but still if you see the complete business i think cloud is the most growing thing which i personally feel yeah so now you come to that the cloud is one of the most uh, asked for uh, so i'll go into technical part of it now so yeah. you have got in open stack uh, i think riday uh, should uh, answer this you have got lot of uh, uh, modules in open stack correct you spoke about the containerized workload kubernetes underlay overlay networking uh, because networking is a little bit of a beast different beast than the storage and compute uh, which is the primary area you attacked earlier now coming to data center obviously we do have to acknowledge that networking uh, it was good old days networking is computing that was the term coined by uh, sun earlier uh, so now how do you see the different modules of open source uh, being offered for cloud not for ai okay ai you got the stack you showed i wanted to know if you do open stack are you going to do containerized are you going to do physical are you going to do virtual is it vm based is it container based and what are the ones you recommend uh, and if you have to add a new model let's say i want to add some uh, mistral which doesn't exist here in your portfolio what would i need to do so two part question one which is better why second if we need to add more modules how do we go about it so uh, partially the you know some part of this question will be answered by me and the rest will be answered by uh, you know uh, mr hemant after this so i'll just answer you that we have got all the flexibility available as regards giving options to customers are concerned 
and uh, secondly since you mentioned uh, rightly that there are you know many ways how the cloud can be utilized and there they can be multiple uh, user scenarios which demand different uh, di different ways of uh, you know establishing a private cloud so since we have got the flexibility available not just limiting to open stack deployment we have got a flavored uh, you know license version available as well which can help some of these uh, you know organizations to go with a license back solution too so both the options are addressed by us and if you ask me which one is better then i would like mr himan to uh, comment on this then if what is his recommendation because from the user's standpoint i think he'll be in a better position to answer the question for most of our enterprise customers they prefer vm based deployments for <clears throat> we have been trying to uh, move many of our vcc customers also to have kind of hybrid environment cloud based uh, kind of setup for their hpc requirements where we for hpc we prefer bare metal deployments and uh, containers are now catching up containers are something which are still catching up in india so it's mostly been vm based a little bit of it uh, bare metal and now containers are coming up good so i had the second question part which was like example i want to add a new module which doesn't exist currently in your portfolio of software in the tyron cloud how would you go about it how would you go about onboarding such a new yeah yeah definitely we we can look into it we are always as you know we are always looking for newer technologies newer things which are happening and we that, i think that is the best part because basically we always want to be with the latest things which are happening and uh, we are known in the market for basically time to market that uh, even in the hardware uh, part also as well as on the software part also like currently open stack also we are trying to run on the almost all on the latest build of linux or maybe one minus one actually normally we have been using so we always try to be on the latest side of the technology and we are always glad to include more more and more products and solutions actually so into our portfolio very good so coming to the next now you say the usage pattern uh, from the institutes uh, as well as from the commercial uh, government usage uh, a approach to hybrid cloud and multi cloud you can say because there may be more than one open stack or maybe more than uh, that the kubernetes along with the infrastructure along with the uh what you call the service oriented architecture and the, also the uh, on top of it some policy load balancing internal external so uh, plethora of things are there what challenges uh, you are facing especially in those areas uh, in uh, doing of course you are doing ci cd i believe on your own uh, tyron cloud uh, but you have to deal with the upstream and your downstream how do you handle that portion any a clue any ideas on that to the uh, it's a bit of a let me put it simple how do you do, do you handle networking nxp because you are doing vmware or you are doing calico because you have to do with kubernetes uh, how do you handle this kind of uh, variations that need to be addressed in your own environment as well as in customer end i think this part uh... There is a dedicated team actually who can. You can answer that uh, actually. Answer that <laughs> question. Yeah. Uh, maybe Himan can try to answer. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Himan. No, I'm extremely sorry, but uh, like, had we included our uh, cloud architecture team, they could have answered it. No problem. Internal, so. I'll. I apologize awesome. for my inability to provide that. No, no answer, problem. Right? No problem. So the the only question was since you said VMware was more than no, no, VMware, the networking and NXP environment for the telco cloud. No, no, uh, Whereas uh, if you go VMware. open source way, then you require Calico. So do you handle Calico? Do you handle NXP both? You misunderstood when I said VM based. I did not say VMware. We do very little VMware. So like oh. when we do virtualization, it's mostly KVM. Oh, I see. I see KVM. Okay, so you meant virtualization, not VMware. Yes, okay, yes. 
got it so in that case uh, networking uh, underlay is a different ball game it is not just an xp it is it is anything that is calico okay got it so the answer is you have got calico as one of them yeah. okay coming back to uh, gokhale are you uh, open to can you unmute yourself i have one i have one very very basic question i am gokhale here from mumbai uh, i just wanted to i was just looking at the uh hardware configuration of uh, your servers is it uh, basically from uh, cots implementations or uh, uh, or it's uh, your uh, own proprietary type of a boards which you have made sir it's it's cots right Cot. the platform that we have right now is cots okay we have a upcoming platform where uh, the board itself will be proprietary design in the okay. sense that we will not go into every enclosure Ah. So overall, the server will be in a commodity. Okay, okay. So essentially, you are using some Xeon processor-based yes. blades, and uh, you are integrating other modules along with that into your rack-mounted solution. Correct, okay, correct. Okay, okay, okay. Actually, Jagandeep, I would like to share with you that the the kind of uh, manufacturing we are doing for servers currently in India that not just uh you know include the process of integration of assembling rather we are doing even the uh, pcb assembly also in india which is for the first time uh, happened in the you know history of india so we are integrating some close to 3000 plus components in india which get uh, you know uh, assembled on a pcb also and from there on uh, onwards our process of manufacturing actually starts oh very nice to know that uh, so this is basically your own design of your pcb according to Yes. Uh, some architecture. Uh, let's yes. say, let's say your eight core architecture is something which you have designed, uh, and uh, that is a PCB which you have made and converting that into uh, a module into the rack. So there is a dedicated, uh, you know, design PCB team. design team that ah. looks after that part. So we design our uh, internal team basically does the designing, and mm -hmm. uh, they basically look after that job. So it is done with the on the reference architecture provided by the technology providers. If my board is based on Xeon, it will be the reference architecture will be provided by Intel. The same way as everybody, all the top vendors do it. We do it in the similar way. The designing is done according to basically on the reference architecture and our requirements. And then basically the, the board is rolled out and the complete PCBA, the SMT is completely done in India. Oh, that's very nice. Very nice. Wonderful. Uh, so that means that you're going up to 32 core uh... Uh, implementations uh, mm -hmm. on the board. Yes. Wow, oh, that's very very encouraging, sir. Thank you so much. We are planning to have an AMD based board very soon. Uh -huh. uh, the number of cores will be very high. Very true, very true. And uh, similarly is the case with your NVIDIA GPU based boards also. Uh, as of now, we are not building NVIDIA based uh, GPUs in India. Uh -huh. But we are uh, we have just opened discussions on it uh, as a long term thing. Okay, okay. So maybe down the line that will also happen. We are okay. supporting up till two NVIDIA A100 GPUs actually, the the, wow. the top ones actually on our boards. Uh, and basically on the new solution, maybe we will support four. But we are also talking uh, to NVIDIA has started that discussion that we should have NVLink on our board itself. Okay. So basically, again, volume and everything becomes a criteria. So there is a lot of discussion around it. It's a really a big challenge doing it. It's not simple. I know, sir. Very, very yeah. true. That's what uh, effort is highly appreciated. I said, no one really has even ventured this much than this far. Very Thank nice. You. Thank you so much. Yeah. Coming back again to, to a bit on the uh, open source and uh, uh, open technology side of it, and especially for the research folks here, those who utilize the platform like HPC and storage and all that. Uh, do you see any IPR they can crank up for uh, India? Uh, are there any opportunities you see for them to uh, provide some research and uh, efforts to on the system, on the application, and which area you think are more opportunistic for the uh, uh, students and the research associates and the faculty can probably absorb that from your knowledge. Actually, we will need to do some brainstorming. This is the place where we will need help from people like you, actually, who can basically, we can, we can go through and we can understand 
how we can contribute and which are the areas where we can generate some kind of uh, IPR actually. So maybe we, we need some brains to do some brainstorming on this and then we can uh, work together. Excellent. So you are open to discussion on that and we do want our uh, research faculty and associates to ensure that they help you because at the end of the day, somebody has to own the intellectual property. And uh, as part of uh, the manufacturing organization, having a IPR profile, which is local to us or accessible to us uh, for the Make in India is a, a great opportunity for the research faculty. Now, uh, we are still uh, open. Is anybody does have, uh, do you have any question from your end to us? If you'd like to know, uh, yeah. what would you like to hear from us? Because we have been asking questions. We have not been answering anything. No, no, no problem. I have, whenever I have a question, I always reach out to you. And you have been so, you and Bikini have been so helpful always. Uh, we really acknowledge the kind of knowledge you people have, particularly on the 5G side, on the telecom side. Maybe we are trying to use that, as you said in the beginning. Maybe we are trying to use that and to develop some new product lines around it. Uh, so we will need some help on that also from you, and we can discuss that uh, offline. And yeah, we can. To yeah, we can discuss it offline. But uh, we are assuring that if there is anything on the uh, broadband or the mobility side of it, uh, both are uh, uh, our forte in our group, and uh, we certainly will uh, add to value to you by providing you. As we have said, we work with TIP. Uh, for the telecom infrastructure project. They do have designs and they are open designs. There is an OCP, which I mentioned earlier, open compute platform that gives you access to the hardware. And so there are many uh, opportunities for us to even engage globally to bring technology besides our own uh, research within our own uh, education system, which is what we are catering this uh, program to. So. Uh, any last word from anybody before we wind up? We have uh, we have still time, 12 minutes, but just wanted to make sure that we have covered uh, all aspects. Gokhale, you want to have one more question, which is bothering you probably? No, no, I'm all fine, I think. Okay. I got all my inputs here. Thank you, Mr. Sanjay. I think it was very good insights that you have provided and very encouraging to see that you know, so much of work is being done under the clouds, on off for the clouds, I should say. So I, <laughs> sitting over here, we are really not uh, aware of so many things that are happening in India. So that is basically one of the reasons why this is a wonderful forum where people can get to know what all are happening across the, the nook and corner of the country. So much of talent is there, so much of activity going on, and you know we are not still aware. So, so we always look before, for your encouragement and uh, opportunities so that we Yeah, know. sure, sir. Sure, sure, sure. Before, before there are a lot, lot many use cases, I'll tell you. Trust me, there are a lot many use cases uh, which industry needs. And uh, at the same time, we really do not know where to get started and how to move in that required direction. Right? Uh, any, anyone talks about cloud, there are only two big names that come to their mind or the three big names that come to their mind is either AWS, Azure or Google Cloud. They, people cannot think anything beyond that. Even the very big companies, and you know, I consult with some very big companies, but you know they all still are in the same uh, cloudified uh, uh, approaches and even to their requirements. I think this is a wonderful uh, information which I have got. Thank you so much. Yeah, I will. I will before Mumbai, you are based out of Mumbai, sir. Which uh, organization you are? I'm an, I'm, a, I'm an independent consultant. Yeah, I also work alongside with Mr. Prakash. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So and he's the president. I, uh, <laughs> he's the president of our organization. Oh, yeah. very good. So I will take your contacts. Definitely from uh, sure, most welcome. Sir. Most welcome. So uh, coming to one last question before we part, data centers uh, across the Indian continent have been telling that they are uh, dealing with very, very uh, power-hungry or uh, and data uh, hungry uh, requirements. So essentially what they are saying is uh, data goes from exabyte to petabytes. You mentioned two petabytes, but uh, we see that that petabytes will run into much, much higher, uh, hundreds of and thousands of petabytes. That is one data side of it. 
the other side of it is obviously the power consumption they talk about green data center so in these two respects storage side i heard that you are going to petabit i am sure you will go to hundreds of petabits but on the green side of it how are you conserving energy is there anything that you are doing that will conserve energy uh, so that we don't have to have example one example i give yesterday we had piyush somani from esds he said that he has a data center in mape in near new bombay and there are 50 new coming up and they will gobble up 3 gigawatts of power and he predicts that we are going to have 100 gigawatts of power requirement and so unless we do a implementation which is green centric or which is reducing uh, there is no way we are going to attain the growth we expect so how are you addressing the energy conservation and under uh, and low utilization of power in your servers and serverless computing so i'll answer this this is human here so as far as power conservation is concerned um, it is indeed true that power consumption has been growing and it has been growing abnormally like by leaps and bounds with the average server power going up in every generation the prime reason being that the processors are not consuming more power people are using for larger memory sizes more storage and then people have started using gpus for computing which are very powerful to the extent of the power consumption of the system we don't have too much we can do but we do have some optimized designs which require lower cooling so that in turn helps us uh, reduce the cost of uh, cooling in terms of power so that is where we work so we have systems that can support up to 40 degrees ambient temperature so the cooling requirements are lower we are also working on solutions to enable uh, liquid cooling in data centers which will become something which is uh, as of now it's you see very few data centers with liquid cooling enabled but it seems going forward that will become a pretty standard and common thing so we are working on those solutions also so the cooling part we can reduce the power consumption and uh, you, hey, you actually hit on the dot because uh, uh, the the md of uh, esds told us that you can go down by the methods of cooling up to 33% less power and that is the best they can do for 5 to 7 years they say but unless there is some technological breakthrough uh, that's the only solution they have and i think you are in par with them you are uh, definitely okay. hit the yeah. target because we can't go below 3 nanometer for the uh, semiconductor technology uh, okay. and until that happens uh, power consumption cooling requirement will Uh, have to be addressed this way i think uh, all of you have done a superb job i think uh, riday uh, ridesh uh, no no sorry i i i i was spelling him correctly so uh, hemant um, sanjay uh, i think dropped out riday has dropped out looks like okay no, no, he is there only he is okay 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 you are there i i did see yeah, laptop okay so uh, what i see is you have done a fantastic job oh you are here i can see the photo <laughs> sorry for that so you have done a fabulous job uh, presenting make in india case and you deserve to be uh, acknowledged as the leading player and we do want to help you collaborate with more and more uh, people and get you to the level where you can also coordinate with research people to enable more uh, and better optimized solutions because india is very cost conscious so if you ask for any optimization the first optimization they always talk about cost and so cost performance and other uh, multivariable uh, optimization which is what our research people want to uh, uh, contribute to uh, including for 5g and for the various data centers for all around including ran including mobility so uh, this workload uh, is very very wide and every workload needs a configuration requires a policy implementation a single dashboard and all those kinds of thing so some management software and all that so we look forward to work with you on those front and with that i will bring to an end the closure and the last word i will give to 
uh, to sanjay i think because he deserves uh, the and along with hemant uh, the, the uh, persistence to continue in spite of the various hurdles for last 33 decades i don't think many a people can withstand that and uh, we are very honored to have you go ahead you are the last word thank you so okay. much thank you prakash ji thank you vipin ji and uh, gokhle ji it was really nice talking to you and basically actually what happened, our strength comes from people like you who are supporters for make in india it's very important without having supporters like you it's very difficult it was difficult to fight but basically in this whole process we have seen there are some people who really have supported us very well in the journey the current government is also supporting us so people used to say us 5 years 7 years down the earlier that this is not possible this is a impossible task but primarily today we are almost on launching technology at the same time at the worldwide level we are already working with intel on the latest chipset which is going to be launched in december and the target is that we will be time to market and we will be ready with our make in india product also along with the world so that is the idea we are working the government is also supporting us well and uh, definitely we see if this support continues and uh, if this goes on definitely make in india will grow and this will bring lot of technology innovation into the country this will increase employment and this will make india self reliant so i think this is again very important for the country also and thank you for your time thank you for uh, the complete patient hearing thank you so much so with that we will end this session i will stop uh, recording uh, let me see whether i have uh, where is the security